Rachel Levis is responding to claims that she abandoned her dog because he was aggressive. But did she? We also have the Beverly Hills reunion. We had Sutton shuttled out for a medical emergency, which she's now revealing to page six. And then we're doing a reality TV rewind to the glory days of pop culture in the early 2000s. I hope you're ready for it. Let's get it. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TV tea, surf fresh all week long. Now, let's dive in. Welcome on in, everybody. Happy, what's today, Thursday? Oof, it's already Thursday. Oh, it's Thursday, which means we have a, a bonus episode that's going to be coming out soon. Um, there's no members only tonight, because like I told you guys, I am going to the GLAAD Awards. So it, today's going to be booked and busy, and I just realized I have to be there early. So it's a repeat of Sunday, and I have to figure out what I'm going to do with the dogs. So Thursday's off to an eventful, it's an eventful morning, but we're going to have a fun time, because we have um, a very good friend of mine, you may know him from his podcast. It's called the Dump- Dumpster Dive Podcast, which I am going to be on very soon. Me and Jeff, Jeff Epstein from Disaster Daters, we're here. We're gonna we're gonna deliver. We deliver a lot of naughty talk, but a lot of pop culture talks. So you're gonna want to subscribe to the Dumpster Dive Podcast. But please welcome Mr. Tom Hamlet. Hi Zach, and hi uh, the No Filter family. It's nice to be back here with you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Of course. <laughs> Did you catch the um, reunion last night, the Beverly Hills reunion? Yes, I did. I did. I did. Um, what is what's there to say about it? Not much, honestly. But <laughs> not much thoughts. <laughs> I mean, like you know, Beverly Hills. They'll what they'll what they'll give us is a trailer. You know, a trailer. They always like want to give us a trailer that you often are a part of yourself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like you're doing a lot of the work for them to make things seem more than they are. Like, when in doubt, if there's something like a little lax, they're like, let's just pull a, a clip from Zach Peter's podcast and we can like throw it in to make it seem dramatic. <laughs> but true. You know what the funny thing is, is I don't know when they're going to use these clips. Like I yeah. sign a release form up front and then I never know if or when. So every time they play, like they played my voice so many times this season. I know. In the trailer, in the premiere, in the finale, in the reunion. Um, and it's the same clip. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm you know, people hey, are always like, they used you again. I know. The exposure is great. So there you go. No, the reunion was fine. I don't know. I. I, it's such a letdown that Kyle is still pretending that she's not in a relationship with Morgan, I guess. I don't know. I, I find guess it so they're bizarre. Not, I guess they're not like officially in a relationship, but it seems like she's interested in Morgan. It seems like she's open to the idea. They just haven't, for whatever reason, taken that step. Mm-hmm. Do you think maybe it's because Morgan doesn't want more exposure on her personal life? Because she is all about her her music. I mean, exposure is exposure. I promise you her streams have gone up since she became friends with Kyle. thousand percent. Like, no shade to Morgan, but, like, I had had no idea who she was until this. So, like, I mean, I'm not touched into the country music scene, uh, or especially not the, like, the the queer country music scene, like, the the off-the-beaten-path country music. I'm, like, not don't know anyone there, so I wouldn't have known her, but I'm positive she's raking in money from this relationship situationship i think kyle do you think they'll? i think they'll end up together one thousand percent i think they you can tell they are obsessed with each other they love each other so then why aren't they just together um you know i i don't know these, it's complicated these... listen as somebody that's like Let's just say I know the situation very familiarly oh, and really? I understand it. And I'm trying, it's, it's, listen, there are layers and it's complicated. And so I get it. But I'm also just like from an outsider looking in, looking at them, I'm like, just fucking be together. But then also somebody, you know, in that, you know, place. I'm, I, I, get, I, I do get the, the fact that, like, yeah, sure. I get the idea, obviously, that like they, want to come out with their you know relationship on their own terms yeah but they're also i mean she had kyle in her music video queer baiting the whole world with them like almost making out 
Or did they make out? I can't even remember. But like, Their regardless, it's like very right. close. And I'm like, okay, well, you're you're leaning in to it. Yeah. If you hadn't done that, I would have maybe respected the the privacy a little bit more. But you are leaning into the fame and the the rumors and the yeah. nastiness. So I I don't know. I I just it it bothers me. Yeah, I got it. I mean, I, I, want, I want to hear about like, your situation that's close to it. No, we don't. We can't. We can't. We can't. No. I, uh, trust me when I tell you there are things that I've said on the podcast that I've had to edit out. I, I, this is how you know things are very different for me, Tom Hamlet, is I don't edit anything out of my podcast. So if I'm, you know, doing that, then you know that there's, I just, I, I mean, the podcast is called No Filter. I know. I've never <laughs> been can't. in the brand. You can't go against the brand. Oh, my God. What I tell you, because Jeff and I were on Tom Hamlet's, which, when does that come out, Tom? In like Sunday. four weeks? Oh, okay. No, Sunday. <laughs> no, because people do that. I'll tape a podcast with somebody and they'll be like, oh, it'll be out in November. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. Keep me posted. Um, no, I, I, I like to turn it around. Okay, so we'll be on the Dumpster Dive podcast this Sunday, me and Jeff. But, like, it was funny because in the recording, we're, like, try we want to tell certain stories about certain things that we've gone through that we're trying to say for the new episodes of Disaster Daters that we're taping. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, and I'm, you know, there's a lot, and I think I'm going to start to reveal a lot. Listen, Disaster Daters is a place to do it because that's where we put our lives on display. I agree. I'm more power to you, honestly. I don't think there's anything to well, be... I think for me, I'm just in a place of like learning that I don't have to overexpose and exploit every detail of my life right now. But that's also yeah. hard because that's my comfort zone. It's just like, let's put it all on the table. Yeah, but there's still like a, uh, there's still, you can expose a lot and still keep a couple things, you know, back. I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, Rachel Levis, I, I'm curious what you think about this because you have a dog yourself. So, yes. She ditched her dog. Uh -huh. um, then the dog ended up back with Lisa Vanderpump. Lisa Vanderpump gives James Kennedy the dog. The dog makes the cameo on Vanderpump Rules. And James is like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, I love the dog. The dog is so good. Right? Well, then Lisa Vanderpump's um, restaurant designer comes out. And because um, Rachel went on her pot or she... There was a, the photo that the dog bit the mom. And so the photo leaked to TMZ. TMZ somehow, you know, obtained that photo. Nobody knows how, but obtained a photo of the mom's bitten finger. Um, and they're like, look at the dog. So aggressive. And then Lisa Vanderpump's um, restaurant designer, Nick, Nick, Nick Elaine comes out and he says, we have two amazing dogs that we adopted through Vanderpump Dogs. It made it very clear that for any reason you can no longer care for your dog, you can call the center and they will take the dog back, no questions asked. It seems you only care about, he's referring to Rachel, it seems you only care about yourself and what people would say, which is why you tried to give the dog away secretly. Because that's one thing that Rachel did reveal is that she gave up the dog, but she didn't want it to go to leak into the press because they wanted to, you know, do it quietly. And then eventually they one of the centers looked up the chip and found out it was registered to her and they called Lisa Vanderpump and yeah. you know, it was a whole thing. Um, he says, I'm so sorry, but I had never met Graham before. And I personally flew him out to hand him over to James spending the entire day flying with him and also spending the night with him in my room. This is not an aggressive dog. He was scared and I'm sure felt abandoned probably for a long time under your supervision. When a dog doesn't feel love or security, they will lash out. You gave him up because he did not fit your lifestyle. End of story. And how dare you try to portray Lisa Vanderpump as a person who would use a dog for a storyline. That's rich. Well, do you even know, do you even know <laughs> or understand what she has done for dogs? You need to, st you need to stop and think before you continue down this road of trying to make everyone at fault for your shortcomings. Okay. So he puts that out the other day mm -hmm. and Rachel Levis's PR team decides they're going to jump into the fight and they write. So I personally spoke to one of the fosters who told me exactly what happened. The dog bit numerous people, including Rachel's mom. They couldn't take care of the dog anymore for their safety and in case a dog bites anyone else. They took it to the top rescue for the breed. People want to spin it into something it's not. Now you have something from 
Vanderpump Dogs saying that she should have returned it to Vanderpump Dogs. The dog didn't come from there. It was a gift from her parents. Just an example of people trying to jump in and ride the coattails of a story for their 15 minutes of fame and pervert the narrative against Rachel. The ER doctor even said that the dog should be euthanized, but they chose to but they chose a top rescue foster. Rachel was in a mental care facility until, and she couldn't care for the dog at the time. You guys tell me how a dog bites so many people and suddenly is calm. Professional trainers were bitten. Breed specific adopters were bitten. And suddenly the dog is calm. I'm not an expert, but it seems kind of obvious to me how to calm him for TV. Does a dog suddenly change after biting at least six people, including trained professionals? So it sounds like, it girl public public relations, which wow, what a groundbreaking name! It girl publications. Um, sounds like it girl publications is insinuating that my understanding. This is my own speculation from what is being insinuated. My understanding is they're claiming that the dog is being drugged. Did you get that from that message? Yes, I got that from the message. I, the whole thing is a little confusing to me, honestly, because the dog does seem very chill on camera. Yeah, but. So I understand that maybe something is up there, but I also just, I, I guess I don't really understand why we went as far to like bring up the aggression in the dog when I think her argument enough to just be like, I was in a, I, I did not have the mental capacity to take care of an animal. I mean, when you have a dog, that's like a, it's like a baby, like it's a child, yeah. like yeah. there's, it, it is a hands on situation. She was not in a situation to do that alone. That, so I think, it all could have been left there. So I'm confused at why we are diving, why both sides are diving into the aggression of the dog so heavily. Like, let them figure that out on their own, maybe. I don't know. I just don't... I, and also, it's a dog. Like, I just... I, I just think it's... My thing. You think it's what? I don't know. Lisa Vanderpump's done it before. Yeah, she's done... Yes, she's made things, storylines before on the show. For sure. Um, My thing, though, is... Dogs are impulsive. They're animals. They're reactionary. You know what I mean? That like if a dog does have behavioral issues or it does mm -hmm. have aggression issues, usually it's stemming from something. A dog's not just going to bite for the sake of biting. A dog is right. impulsive. A dog will not react like that unless there is something that provokes it. You know, mm -hmm. I have two one-year-old puppies myself. They're giant puppies. They're also, they're, um, um, Labrador golden labradoodles um and so they have they're also like i believe graham is a golden doodle so i have two mm -hmm. dogs of a similar breed they just also have labrador mixed in with them um so i understand temp the temperament and the amount of energy that they have etc yeah. listen if i'm able to do it with two giant dogs in a downtown la apartment you know if i'm able to do it here i feel like it's possible if i'm doing it with two of them it's possible to do it with one of them as a single a single gal rachel um but, but like that's something I, you wanted to do that's something you wanted like right like like, I don't know that she wanted to be a dog parent as much as James did, but then she maybe got stuck with the situation. I, I don't know. No, well, I'm not sure. Like, it was her oh, dog. They adopted it together. No, it was her dog. And oh, she just got it. to be dating James at the time. So James, you know, was with her when she had the dog. Wow. Um, but they didn't get the dog together. But so I just, I don't. And she's also, I mean, it's been a couple of years. The dog's at least like got to be like two or three at this point. If not I think older, a older than that. Yeah, it's it's been a few years. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I think the fact that other people are jumping in on this, like Rachel's PR team and Lisa's restaurant designer, and like they have their own ideas about the dog. I don't think the dog. Do you think the dog is being drugged? I do know that some dogs. I do know that some dogs have really hyperactivity, and so there are like you know. I mean, I give I give my dog like CBD treats sometimes if he's having anxiety. But like, yeah. like there are things to do that like you can. I don't. I I, I don't know that he's being drugged. I, that seems crazy. That is a crazy like thing to put out into the world. I don't know. It, it feels it feels bizarre to me and very dramatic. Very dramatic. Um, Brittany says Rachel on her podcast said that Tom would rub her feet in front of Ariana. I'm sorry. Anyone who drags Rachel and not Tom and doesn't think Ariana should have known you're wrong. Your mama's wrong. So this is an interesting argument that people are making because this is an this is something that Rachel made in her lawsuit file. Uh -huh. um, yeah. that basically 
it was funny. I was watching Emily D. Baker. She was reading through the court documents the other day. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, oh, it seems like they're kind of trying to imply that like Ariana should have known that there was an affair going on because it was happening right under her nose. And then she keeps reading the documents and she's like, oh, no, that's exactly what they're saying is that Ariana should have known better. And she should have known that the affair was happening because it was happening right under her nose. And so I'm assuming this comment is in reference to, you know, what Rachel was talking yeah. about that, you know, Tom was rubbing Rachel's feet in front of Ariana. And so in that sense, like how is Ari like Ariana should have known that her man of nine years was cheating on her with her friend. I mean, she seemed to have turned a blind eye to a lot of his antics anyways. So I, I, I don't know. I think but she like, was. Is that, a, is that a, like a reason to blame her for like, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> like, I don't think that's like, I don't think you can blame. Should... Like, that's a crazy thing to be like, to be a mistress in a situation and be like, I got to blame the, the, the girlfriend because she didn't know. So it's not my fault. Yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, well, she like, should have known. I was doing it right in front of her. How does she not know? How could she not know that I was banging her man? That's her fault. <laughs> like, that's a wild. Like I've always said that her new memoir, when Rachel writes her book, it should be called the audacity of a mistress. <laughs> Agreed. It is. It, and the, the audacity of a pet owner. <laughs> right. The audacity of a pet owner. Um, <laughs> The gaslighting to say Ariana should have. Yeah, like that's the crazy part. Like it just is wild to me that people are like, Ariana should have known. Also, we don't know. Imagine watching your man rub another girl's feet. But to what? Like, we don't know the degree of the truth of what that, like, I don't know if I believe that entirely. I, I, I don't think, like, it just, you, we don't know their relationship. They seem to have a very, whether it was actually open or not, like a very, open relationship with how they just like there are people always over they were always like hanging out with others and hanging out with rachel and like i think there was a trust there on ariana's end that nothing was going on so it's like no he just is like rubbing her feet like she just like didn't think twice of it i don't know people actually listen to her podcast lisa says listen to her podcast when she mentions tom sending her to the us weekly magazine and always wanted to be on the cover and like Cool, right? Oh, because they were on the cover for Scandavum. So oh, he's I mean, Us Weekly magazine when she was in treatment. My he, okay, so my big art like frustration with this season of Vanderpump Rules and the Rachel Speaks podcast, whatever it's called, <laughs> Rachel Gone Rogue, um, is that the, the all this seems to be on the show. Like I, I'm not. I Thank I, you. I am, she would have made a lot more money. She would have made so much more money. I understand she's protecting her mental health. She, the argument is was she to her, no no is no she, this her, no this is what I'm gonna say. Her argument was she was protecting her mental health by not being on the show, but instead she's just reliving it in a room with a bunch of producers while she sits on a mic and talks to some like and weird mental up. health professionals. Yeah, and they gas and her up. They're yes people that like convince her that she is right. And it's like I think there needs to be a little bit more self-awareness if you are, are going to go through this journey. But if you're just going to continue to defend yourself, I'd rather you do it on the television show. At least, yeah, and earn your coin. That's clearly what all this is about, is about right. relevancy, re, you know, regaining your reputation. But she's like, no, I didn't want to join the show because of the dog, and Lisa was going to embarrass me with the dog. Well, it's like, well, you gave up your fucking dog, so now you have to face the consequences of it. You, you fucked Tom Sandoval for seven months, mm -hmm. and you gave up your dog. These are your choices that if you're afraid of having to face them, then where is your real accountability? It's a mess. It's a mess. Rachel, uh, Mallory says, Rachel and Sandoval vehemently denied their connection. So if Ariana knew, then why would Rachel and Tom continue to deny it, lie, and hide during that time? Oh, yeah, they continue to lie throughout the reunion, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rachel was a broken feet rubber. Wait, I mean a minute. No, it was a known feet rubber. <laughs> oh, a known feet rubber. Um <laughs> I will not listen to her. Why listen to her when I can come here and listen to her to Zach? Well, Jen, that's sweet. Shout out to Jen. Come listen to Zach. Talk about her. I love how supportive <laughs> and kind the Zach pack is to each other. Thank you, everyone, for making this a happy, safe place as we tear down Rachel. Yes, thank you, Mimir. <laughs> a, a safe space to tear down others. <laughs> <laughs> no, a safe space to hold other people accountable. No, I, I'm giving you shit. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but no, I just, I don't. Are, are you listening to Rachel Goes Rogue? No, <laughs> I got other Anybody things to do. 
it, it's so funny because the only people that listen to it will like buy her bullshit and then they'll come in the live channel and be like, he rubbed her feet. That means that Ariana knew. And I'm just like, guys, come on. I mean, people are listening. It's a hit podcast. So I think so. I don't. It's not charting very well. I mean, I, I think people are talking about it enough where it's it's worth it, I guess, for her to keep up. How but how long? How long is she going to milk this? Is the question. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't we, know how she essentially is operating a recap podcast, which is just a bizarre move to do post choosing to leave a show. It's it's very definitely coded. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, let me leave this show for my mental health, but let me start a podcast where it's just me in a room with all these yes people and talk about just this show. And her, her to me. And her, her childhood trauma. Everything yeah. comes back to her trauma, her trauma, her trauma. I fucked Tom Sandoval because I have trauma. I was like, come on. Everybody has trauma, yes, but at some point, like, you can't live in your trauma. Well, you fucked up. Yeah, there, that's that's it. Like that's kind of the the situation. You just you fucked the gist up. of it. That's the punchline, <laughs> right? But now we're dissecting all of the reasons she fucked up. She's like, "Well, I just got out of, a, out of a relationship with James, and James was really abusive, and so I was drinking a lot more. And then Tom would supply me. This older man would supply me with alcohol because I was in a vulnerable state because I had just gone through an ending of my engagement. I'm like, that's an interesting way to spin that. An engagement that he paid for. Yeah. I feel like I we don't love- give enough airtime to that. Yeah. I just love that, like, they keep, like, the lawsuit is, like, really, like, he was an older man and he took advantage of her and she was in a vulnerable state and he was supplying her with alcohol. I'm like, what, he he offered her a Coors Light when she was going through a breakup before she fucked him, before she decided to fuck him? Like, that's that's the narrative that we're trying to paint here? And the Toms are binge drinkers. So, like, of course, there was alcohol present, like, around them at all times. That's oh, the, they, like, are. They, were, they all drink. Yeah. Rachel, Rachel. is 30, 30, not 19. I, this, I, I do feel like because she has this, like, baby persona, like, yeah. this, like, I'm just a little baby who got trapped in this thing. I'm like, y- no, you're a grown up. You're grown up. And grown-ups do bad things too, but like you can't rely on your your naivety and your being a juvenile yeah. in the situation. No, there's no naivete here. My mother, I was telling her the other day, I was like, could you imagine if I came and I was like, oh my, I'm 30 years old. If I came and I was like, oh my God, this older man, 40, this older man came and took advantage of me when I was in a vulnerable state. I was like, if, if I ever came to you and said that an older man took advantage of me and if I presented this to you i was like as my mother you should be disappointed and you should slap me for that i am a grown-ass adult i make my own decisions i need to take accountability for my own actions and if i fuck my friend's man for seven months then i need to own that shit i'm not gonna play a victim in that no agreed the coors light and bourbon shot combo should be a crime now mallory now now (laughs) sometimes it's fun (laughs) <laughs> i've never had that well i don't drink beer but i've never had that combo uh i i, I definitely have <laughs> a beer and a shot to me is is fun especially whiskey yeah. and i love chorus light wait what does this say i listened to her Ur- 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 says i listened to her podcast she said her therapist said it'd be a good idea rachel wanted to say her side because she can't on the show she could have she could have is the the issue. And she's making money. Plus, I want her podcast to do better than Sheena's. What is Sheena do? Oh, because Sheena, Sheena bra- uh, battered her in the street. <laughs> I, still, I, still, still, I still die for that, guys. <laughs> Wait, did you have you read the lawsuit? No, no. no. <laughs> there's, there's a whole paragraph about how as a result of, of Ariana sending out the, the FaceTime video that she was battered by Sheena Shea. She was punched in the face and shoved into a wall and had her face thrown into the street as Sheena battered her and she had to fly home the next day. <laughs> I was like, Sheena's this big. She battered you? I was like, oh, wow. And it left her with permanent damage to her eyebrow. I was like, the scratch? Okay. Violence is not the answer, but, you know. Listen, every time Rachel does something (laughs) stupid, I'm like, you know what? Somebody call Sheena. Somebody call Sheena. Never forget in the reunion. Can I I do this? Can I, with my nails, can I do this? She can't. 
science. She literally <laughs> cannot. <laughs> it is science. <laughs> um, is she sure that Sheena did that, or did she get attacked by the bloods of the cricks? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lying about violence is never the answer. Listen, I don't think Sheena battered her. I think for Sheena's story is like Rachel came at me, or like Rachel, you know, like went to grab my arm and I said, get away from me. And I like pushed her away from me. Mm -hmm. Which again could be defended as like self-defense. Rachel came at her, so she pushed her away. I don't think she battered. I don't think Sheena's like, let me beat like when has Sheena ever been that girl? If she what? said Lala beat her up, I'd be like, I believe it. <laughs> yeah. Lala like pops the nails off her hands to make a fist and like get get up in there. But Sheena, no. I I just wait, every line text me on the right story Rachel gives them. Uh, I really want Zach's opinion on the story Rachel gives about the first night her and Tom hooked up. I truly, what what was her story? I can't no, keep up story. with her. No. Oh no, on, um, no, on the story Rachel story gives. Story Rachel gives on the first night that she and Tom hooked up. I don't know what her story is. Against Abby, and then they left that thing. That situation. That was how it all it was, happened. Right? No, it was. Um, or at they, their it house, was, they were in the backyard. Yeah, they were in the backyard, and Tom couldn't get in, so they fucked in her car. That was my understanding of it. He, he took advantage of her. He supplied her with alcohol and was like, let's not tell Ariana who's upstairs. And she's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm heartbroken over James. Oh, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel, Ray. Okay, well, since you are a lover of all things pop culture, I want to take it back. I want to do a reality TV rewind and discuss some of the most iconic reality television dating shows that Rachel would never be able to survive these days. She would not. She would be out the first night because someone would quote unquote batter her. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine Rachel on Rock of Love? I cannot. <laughs> that would be amazing. We're going to send Rachel. To Could you imagine Rachel on Charm School? Now that would be kind of fun to me, actually. That would be. Could we, you imagine? I would Vanderpump be down for like a Bravo Charm School. Yeah, Vanderpump Rules Girls Charm School. Or just Kristen? Bravo Girls Bravo Girls Trump. We have Kristen. We have Lindsay Hubbard. Um, 1,000%. MJ. Gigi. Lala. Lala. Could you imagine Wait, Gigi this is Lala? A Listen, fuck Ultimate Girls Trip. Let's do Charm School. I'm here for it. Matt, like um, Matt, who else? Like maybe Southern, we, we need Southern Charm people too. Like Catherine Dennis. Um, Catherine Dennis for sure. Um, uh, What's her name? Uh, Madison. Yeah. Taylor. Taylor, oh Taylor, Taylor. Because Taylor and that. Taylor and Rachel would both be the like we didn't do anything wrong <laughs> in the corner and be like, why am I in charm school? I know. Lacey, oh my great. god, Lacey! You remember Lacey from Ah, uh, love Lacey skulls. Love, love her. Oh my god, Zach, your hair. Why? Why? Tori is mad that that I changed my hair color. She I we know Zach. Time. I haven't told you. I'm loving. The dark hair. I'm loving like the, the dark hair too. I I like the little like salt and pepper on the sides too. I it's, it's, don't. It's I didn't dry. realize how recognizable the salt and pepper was because I'll be like on the the podcast or I'll be on like Instagram and people will always point out that they like the salt and pepper and I'm like I didn't even think it was that noticeable but thank you. Internet. No, I like it. It's 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 it's, it's very becoming, Zach. Listen, I'm I'm growing. I'm Zach goes rogue. I know. You're growing up right before our very eyes. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, well, I do want to dive into all of the reality, the OG reality TVT, which we're going to do in just a sec. But first, I have to tell you guys that I have been sleeping so comfortably lately, and that's because Bowl & Branch makes the softest, most luxurious sheets without any toxins or harsh chemicals. I got some, and I have to tell you, they're so delicious. You're going to love them. Your partner's going to love them. Your pups will love them if you let the pups in the bed. Rachel Levis will love them when she comes over, okay? They use the rarest 100% organic cotton that's traceable from family farm to your family house. Bull and Brand Sheets have a natural unmatched softness and get softer with every wash. Trust me. I made it, I washed them and they only get softer. You can feel the difference with their 30 night worry-free guarantee. Sleep better at night with the softest sheets from Bowl & Branch. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code NOFILTER at bowlandbranch.com. Bowl is spelled B-O-L-L. -L. That's B-O-L-L -L and branch.com. Use promo code NOFILTER. Exclusions apply. See site for details. 
And since we are talking about our little furry friends, your pet is one of a kind, and so is their journey. But every playful moment is a memory in the making. Sometimes our cats and dogs are a little too good at getting in trouble. Don't we know it, right? That's why you should check out ASPCA Pet Health Insurance. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program offers customizable accident and illness plans, making it easier for pet parents like you to help your pet get the care that they may need. They allow you to customize your plan, helping to ensure that your pet's plan is as unique as they are, because vet bills can really add up, especially when you're least expecting it. It's simple. Use their app to submit a claim and you'll receive reimbursement for eligible vet bills directly into your bank account. To explore coverage, visit ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash no filter. That's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash no filter. Again, that's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash no filter. This is a paid advertisement. Insurance is underwritten by either Independence American Insurance Company or United States Fire Insurance Company and produced by PTZ Insurance Agency Limited. The ASPCA is not an insurer and is not engaged in the business of insurance. All right, let's talk 2000s. Let's take it back. Let's do it. Um, Okay, so here are some of the best throwback VH1 MTV reality shows and we'll give our thoughts on them and uh-huh. uh, I figured we'll stick to just the dating because they're so when I was looking back I was like oh my god there are so making the content the band, parental yes. control cribs yep. Ashley Simpson like so many good life of Ryan um mm-hmm. but let's stick oh god, to some I, of about that one. I know let's stick to some of the dating ones so I'll read a few of them off and then we'll pick some of our favorites okay love it so oh, we had VH1, which gave us Flavor of Love with Flavor Flav. We mm-hmm. had, which then gave us Rock of Love with Brett Michaels, which then gave us I Love New York with Tiffany mm-hmm. New York Pollard. We also had Date My Mom. Do you remember Date My Mom? Where people oh, would go I- on dates with someone's mom, and then the mom would have to pick, of the three people, would have to pick who. I love that idea. I forgot about that. Yeah. We had Date My Mom. We had A Shot at Love with Tila Tequila. Mm-hmm. We had Ocho Cinco, The Ultimate Catch. What is that? I don't know what that is. You don't remember Ocho Cinco, The Ultimate Catch? He's um he's an no, athlete, a football player. Now. And so it was essentially like The Bachelor, but his version of The Bachelor with Ocho Cinco. He was looking for his ultimate catch. We also wow. had um, For the Love of Ray J. Do you remember that? Well, of course. Real Chance at Love. Yeah. With Chance from I Love New York. From I Love we New York. Yeah. Next, Next was great. Fabulous. Uh, Megan Wants a Millionaire. Megan is one of my favorite reality TV queens. Icon. Right? Yeah. We also had, um, let's see, what else did we have? Uh, well, uh, what's her favorite? Daisy also had one. Daisy of Love. Daisy of Love. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are all like the major ones. Um, okay, so of all of the ones that I just mentioned, what would you say were your top? I feel like so many of these shows were so iconic that we didn't even really express how I icon- well, actually, let me just read through the rest of this list just to refresh yeah, our, yeah, our give me some more, give me some more. So these aren't dating shows, but these were just other reality mm-hmm. shows at the time. My yep. Fair Brady, do you remember My Fair Brady with of the Brady? What's and from- America's Next Top Model winner, Adrian Williams, I will. Adrian, no, no, Adrian Williams is from Bellaton. Adrian Curry. Adrian Curry. Christopher yeah. Knight and Adrian Curry. Um, the Anna Nicole Smith show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Simple Life. So good. Love it. Bad Girls Club. See, these were, this is why when people now talk about House of Villains, I'm like, unless you were with New York and Tanisha back in the day when this shit was popping off, like, you don't get to appreciate well, and did you see the rumored House of Villains season two cast? Yeah, did you see that? Teresa and Larsa, yeah. Yeah, but I'm, but see, I'm a little disappointed because I wanted more like early 2000s villains and yeah. less like, I felt like it was a little more current villains. Yeah, we need like Lacey Skulls. Lacey, we please. Oh, Heather Chadwell. And I want to see them go at it because you know they have beef still. Yes. <laughs> um, Hogan Knows Best. Brooke Hogan, Pop Diva, mm-hmm. Pimp My Ride, yeah. uh, Girls Next Door, The Osbournes, mm-hmm. Surreal Life. Oh, do you remember Tool Academy? Tool Academy? No, was it like it Charm, was like School, for Charm School for Guys? Charm School for Guys, yeah. 
That's such a clever name. I'm so mad that I did not come School up with Academy. that. Or they had, what was the one? America's Most Smartest Model. Do you remember yes, that, that one? Yes, that was on Bravo. I, th- I think that was on Bravo, that one. Was it on Bravo? Okay. I think so, maybe. Uh, we have Making the Band, Meet the Barkers, Newlyweds Nick and Jessica, mm-hmm. Parental Control, yep. The mm-hmm. Ashley Simpson Show, Cribs. Ooh, Cribs is iconic because they never use their own houses. Laguna Beach, True Life, My Super Sweet 16, The Hills. So Life for those that don't know, wait, for those that don't know, Danielle from Houses of New Jersey was on yeah. um, My Super Sweet True 16. Life. Oh, she was on no. My Super Sweet 16. Oh, wait, maybe it was. Oh, maybe you're right. It, it, one of those. Yeah. yeah. She's on sweet, Super Sweet 16. She's too old for that. There's someone. No, but there's someone. I don't know about that. But there's someone who is a ho- housewife. I'll think of it later. There's someone who's in the zeitgeist now that was a Super Sweet 16er. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Life of Ryan, when Ryan Sheckler was like a popular mm-hmm. skateboarder. Yeah. Uh, what is Rich Girls? Rich Girls is, is so great to see MTV finally giving a voice to unheard of Daughters of America's Wealthiest Men. Oh, I don't remember this show. No, me neither. The lifestyle of two wealthy 18-year-olds. How are they wealthy? I don't Surf know. Girls? I don't remember Surf is Girls. The, we're working. Yeah, we're entering like I maybe this was after our time, maybe. 2003? Oh no, I guess not. No, that was not after my time. These were total flops then. Surf yeah. girls, I don't remember surf girls. A group of young female surfers explore the world's greatest surfing locations. Don't know. Dismissed. Dismissed was a reality television show on MTV that premiered in 2001. One person simultaneously takes two others on a date. Each dater must choose a place to go. Oh, I remember this one. And the person running the date dismisses the person that they like the least. Each of them competing for a timeout card. I don't remember this that. Was, See, this was like a knockoff of Next. Yeah, essentially. No, one of my favorites that you haven't touched on yet is I Love Money, which I wish they would bring back in some format. I Love my Charm School, I Love Money. Oh, yeah. those were so... They should bring... Like, Bravo should do competition shows now like well, ultimate growth is fun but well i think that the success of traders i think they're realizing that the yeah. i mean but like traders the the reach that traders has had is huge so oh yeah danielle was on true life yeah um the reach of traders has had is huge because it crosses over so many different genres of reality tv viewers which i'm obsessed with because i love like connecting with people who are because I pretty much watch everything that all the people came from still. Like I watch, I'm a survivor, big brother person and the challenge. But it's fun to connect with people who don't know who those people are. But then didn't, yeah. like I know people didn't know who Phaedra was. And like now they are obsessed with Phaedra. And now they're going to go back and watch Atlanta. Like I think yeah. there's, but I think they should do more like that. Because it's so fun to see all these different like reality TV genres come together. Yeah, I agree. Look at Michelle says Meredith needs her own version called You Can Leave. Imagine if Meredith Marks hosted a version of Next and it's just you, you can, can leave. leave. Michelle, you need to you need to copyright that idea. It's it's amazing. Oh my um, god. Wait, so some of my favorites though. I mean, we have to obviously like I feel like number one and number two spot is obviously Flavor of Love and Rock of Love because they yeah. spawned and I have to give Flavor of Love, I think, the number one spot only because they, they were the first that did it. Yeah. Um, and it it was a show that I think they probably thought no one would watch. And we covered it on our podcast. We covered the whole, we actually covered the whole series, the whole season one on our Patreon. But um, the show, the viewership was crazy. By the finale, it had like 10 million viewers or something on the reunion. It's insane to think that that many people were even watching. No, I know. Cable, let alone- watching uh watching reality shows crispy treats wants us to talk real world well real world was like started 10 years before this yeah i never really watched real world to be honest yeah i was not a big real world person either i i got to know the real world people through the challenge um but yeah rock of love and flavor of love i think are really the blueprint for so much reality that still happens to this day don't you think zach also, I agree, but also to think like this era, like everybody's talking about like, oh, we need to, um, you know, the bachelor, we need to revamp the bachelor. We need, you know, the first black bachelor, the first gay bachelor, the first, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, 
guys, do you not realize we like we grew up with a lot of these style sh- like a shot at love with Tila Tequila. She was the first openly bisexual woman that was dating men and women at the same time and like didn't get enough credit for that. New York was the first black woman to have her own reality competition show. She was the headliner for that show. Um, yeah. Didn't Antonio Banderas had a dating show too, didn't he? <laughs> what? No, who was it? Oh, Antonio Sabato Jr. I was like, Antonio Banderas was in like blockbusters. He wasn't <laughs> into a dating show, I don't think. <laughs> uh, but I would have loved. I would love honestly any and all celebrities to have a dating show. Shep had a dating show for a minute. Remember that? Yeah, relationship. It's still his handle oh, on Instagram. <laughs> it was called My Antonio. And My it was Antonio, Antonio Sabatos Jr. Yeah. And then he had that. That was, oh, that was in 2009. Wow, I didn't realize that was more recent. And then he, didn't he become a porn star? And then he became a politician. I don't, I don't know. The career trajectory of Antonio Sabato Jr. He was a soap star that did reality TV and then he became a porn star. And now he's, uh, um, now he, he works in politics. He's occupying different lanes. We, we have to support that. I mean, I guess. Wait, so what are your favorites though? Like what so outside of like outside of Rock of Love and Flavor of Love, like outside of that, what are some other ones that you you wish you would revisit like more often? Um, definitely love. I would love to rewatch a shot at Love with Tila Tequila. Yeah. I just feel I like where, that was where it is. wild. Mm-hmm. Um that was wild. But I also I feel like next and date my mom just have such a special place in my heart. Cause like I would love to do like reboot that i mean i don't think those shows would ever work now like how do you do next where somebody walks off the bus and you're just like next even though that's essentially what we do for twitter but i just feel like i mean what we do with tinder um or like dating apps but like yeah i don't think it's i don't think it's like that i the culture is very sensitive these days but i don't find next to be that like i don't know offensive it doesn't feel that shady to me I mean, dude, I was watching clips of Next, and it was pretty. <laughs> well, the, the shadiest part is they walk out of the bus, and MTV yeah. puts yeah. honestly whatever they want under them. They have like three things. It's like loves peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, like goes on weekly dates with his mom, and like d- and only washes his his body once a week. Like they'll like completely yeah, just write just nonsense. So- <laughs> I just think it was so wild to think you would go on a date with somebody and then at the end of it, you would have to decide, do I want to go t- on a second date with this person or do I want to take my $37? And people would be like, I want the $37. <laughs> hey, you know what? That was like almost 20 years ago. $37 was a lot of money. <laughs> it went a lot further than it does now. $37 does. now is like a smoothie. Yeah. Air one. But it was what I loved those date. My mom was fun because you would just see the mom. Like, would you ever do date my mom with your mom? Would I think that'd be so fun. I, I think that'd be fun. I, I, I like think it's a, a really kind of like fun idea to get to know someone. I'm shocked they, Netflix they hasn't do, picked something, an idea like that up. They should do date my mom with housewives. Imagine oh. Vicky and Meredith going on dates for Brooks. That. W- this is an idea that you must lo- you oh, I'm actually mad you said it on air because you need to figure out a way to get this on its feet. This is genius. I agree. Zach, are you the kind of person are you the kind of son who encourages his mom to date or is no man good enough for her? Either way, sons are cute when it comes to moms and dudes. Uh my mom's a lesbian now and she's been with her partner for like 12 years. So, I don't oh, work. It, yeah, she left her husband for a woman. Um but like I, there was a, a show on Lifetime <clears throat> Oof, years ago. It's so, I have so many great stories of all these different shows that I, you know, I have quite the resume. I'm not like somebody that just talks about how they used to work at Sir and, you know, still 
knows the cast and that's their only story that they tell every week on their <laughs> say their <channel>. name <laughs> <laughs> name of um but no i did a, a a show a prank show years ago on lifetime okay. and it, what the fuck was it called it was a show where you oh it's called prank my mom i was like it was a show where you prank your mom but it was called prank my mom um and so i pranked my mother and so the prank that they had me do was um that they oh my god how funny <laughs> Mary says that's the dream. Leave your husband for another woman. Well, ask Kyle Richards. Well, Mary, I I beg you to dive in to the lady pond. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was called prank my mom, and so the prank that they had me do was set my mother up on a fake blind date. And so at first, I told her we were having lunch, and so she's like, okay. And so we go to lunch, and then um, this man shows up, and he has a photo. It's like this old man. He's like missing teeth, and he shows up, and he's like, "Hi, are you Nancy?" I went to the bathroom. They're like, go to the bathroom and the man's going to walk in and be like, hi, are you Nancy? He's going to pull up a photo of her and be like, I'm supposed to meet you on a blind date. And then I'm supposed to be like, oh yeah, by the way, you're really here on on a blind date. I met this guy online and I'm setting you up and I think he's going to be great. So we, we did it, but she figured out it was a prank like halfway through. She's like, this has to be a prank. And then we we cut it. They cut us out of the episode because she cracked it. Oh no, she cracked it. She should have played along mom. Come on. Yeah. Once you realize that you're on a dating on a prank show, then you have to just lean into it. Lean in. I'm like, like on scare tactics. I would, I was obsessed with scare tactics where they would like set up those insane pranks. Oh my God. I miss scare tactics. Yeah, Wait, I mean, it was at one point. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, it was so, it was deeply evil, but I have like a f- fucked up side of me that laughs at people, you know, like so falling or <laughs> like getting into precarious so situations. So I loved it. Missing so teeth would be an advantage, Brian says. I, I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Well, it was funny because even in the date, he like took his tooth out and he's like, look at it. I can take my teeth out. And she was just. Sonia like, Morgan what? literally does that. <laughs> Do you imagine going on a date with somebody they take their teeth out as like a party trick? No, I would not feel well. I would be, I would ask to get the check, I think. Oh my God. In reflecting on that Lifetime show, I've done so many different shows. There was a show that they were, the MTV was trying to do when they had 16 and pregnant. Remember when 16 and pregnant had come out and that was really popular. They Mm -hmm. wanted to do a show about like a positive 16 year olds. And at the time I was doing a lot of like fundraising work. So they wanted to do a show about like, you know, people like 16 and like doing something with your life. Right. Instead of getting pregnant, like here's an alternative because they were saying that like putting uh, teen moms on TV was only going to make people want to get pregnant so they can end up on TV. Which I don't know. <laughs> I think that's crazy. I don't think that, that's crazy. That's but I crazy. remember that was the argument at the time. So they were trying to develop new programming. And so I had filmed a show where they had followed me, like doing fundraising and all of this stuff. Um, and yeah, I remember. But that that show never came to light either. I mean, there are so many different reality shows that I've done at this point. Uh, th- listen, and we, weren't we just talking about this with Jeff on your on your podcast about how like we just we need to green light something now? We do. We got to We got to get Zach on a show. I know, well, I never told you about the project that Jeff and I are. Yeah, what is it? Can you talk about it here or no? Um, I mean, it's it's something that's been in the works for a minute. Um, there, it's still being worked out and structured, but there is a show that we're all potentially, you know, I mean, I say potentially. I know Jeff and I have guaranteed our slots, <laughs> but um, no, there's a there's a, a show that they they've been trying to develop. Um, it's just a matter of finding the right cast. And I think that's been the biggest issue is, you know, who is going to work on the, the concept is great. The show is like everything, the pieces are there. We just need the right players. And so they're trying to rework some of the cast right now, but it it's, it would be a reality fun. show. Yeah. It'd be a reality show. And I'll tell you, it'd be a hell of a lot better than real friends of WeHo. That was barely a show. That That was a mess. Did you watch any of that? No, just like clips that I would see. Yeah, I watched like the first. I watched the first like twenty minutes of the first episode, and I was like, "This is, this is not for anyone." I don't think it's. It was just awful. It really was. Um, never forget. Never all over herself on Flavor of Love. Not all on all over herself on the staircase. And so then when the girls were walking up to go back up the stairs, they saw it like a pile of shit on the staircase. After the rose, after the clock ceremony. See, and people think that it's too much that Ramona does it now. 
Oh, I'm always here for the the women shitting their pants. <laughs> it's so it's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, date confessional with Zach and people have to follow Zach's dating penance. My dating penance? What is my dating penance? What does that mean? I like don't your know. your dating penance. Does that mean like your people have to follow like your dating? I think it I think she's saying like all of your your sex capades. Listen, listen to disaster daters. That's my dating penance right there. One of the teen moms has seven kids with four different baby daddies just for the show. She did it just for the show. That is crazy. Well, so I always, so I was a more VH1 kid than a um, MTV kid. I never understood the difference between Teen Mom and 16 and Pregnant. They were two completely different shows, but what was like the, was there a different conceit to both of them? Yeah. I never watched either. 16 and pregnant was when they were 16 and they'd gotten pregnant. And you followed their pregnancy journey. Teen and mom just was one episode, right? Correct. They Got each it. had one episode that followed their pregnancy journey. Teen mom was, they pulled like four of the most popular moms and then followed their lives over the course of the season. Got it. It was seeing them actually be like a teen mom and raise their babies. That was wow. Farrah Abraham why amber portwood oh my god we need to put these like that was well, also no, they, great they're all back together again though like they are they're doing like teen mom like og like, family vacation like, it's kind of yeah dumb. i know no i agree it is dumb you know a show that so and uh, outside Remember of mtv the, like, even put bristol palin on there for a minute i was like this is dumb oh yeah that was a mess no outside of mtv and vh1 a show that i was obsessed with uh was I was always obsessed with like the TLC universe as well because like they would dive into just some madness back in the yeah. early days. Like, and my strange addiction, I was obsessed with my strange addiction. And just recently, in the past year, they they brought back my strange addiction, and they have like people that were uh, like strangely addicted to something back on checking in on whether or not they're still like addicted. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, you, I find it riveting. Oh, they are revisiting, or you want it to be? No, a thing? it's a show. I've watched it. Oh, they, like, they, oh. yeah, it's called like they, My Strange Addiction, still addicted or something. That's weird. What did the lady that's eating the couch? Is she still good? I don't remember if she's on it, but there's one girl who um, ate the. There was one girl who ate cigarette ash. <laughs> like all day, she would just eat ash, um, okay. and. Now she's addicted to chewing gum, which is, of course, better when she says it. But then they go into her house and the chewing gum situation is like there's gum like lined on the walls because she takes the gum out and puts it in places on the walls. And she keeps waking up with gum in her hair because she falls asleep chewing gum. I'm like, this is a larger problem than like <laughs> the gum. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That sounds Wait, terrible. Crispy treat. Do you see her comment? Yeah. Yeah, that's a vitamin deficiency. There's a lot of people that eat ash and chalk and dirt. It's an iron deficiency. Well, then take some iron pills. Take an iron pill. That's like something you can buy at CVS. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? It's so weird. Yes. Um, in, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, in terms of dating shows, we're ranking the of love shows. Flavor of Love and Rock of Love, I think, are the two at the top. Yeah, I agree. And then I think I Love New York is right I under. Megan I Love Millionaire. Even though it was short lived, it was super. I, I want, I need like investigation discovery or someone to do a documentary on all that went down with I Love Money and Megan Wants a Millionaire and all that stuff. I dove into that like in 2020. I did, I interviewed so many of them. Yeah, I remember you told me that, but like we need, we need like, I feel like the world doesn't have as much knowledge about how crazy that was. It was wild. Do you remember the police chase? They were like literally mm -hmm. chasing this man as he was fleeing to Canada. Yeah. Yeah. For those that don't know, there was a guy who won I Love Money and well, yeah, well, this is in reference to it. It won I Love Money three and they had to stop airing the show during its airing because he did end up um, murdering someone. Yeah. She said, she said, can we release I Love Money three, please? And just edit Ryan out. He won the show. You can't yeah, edit it. He won season three. That's why they couldn't just edit him out. So he was a contestant on Megan Wants a Millionaire, Meg, which was a spinoff from Rock of Love. Megan was one yeah. of the standouts on Rock of Love. She gets her own spinoff. <clears throat> 
called Megan Wants a Millionaire. He happens to be one of the millionaires that's coming on the show to date her. He makes it to the top three. After he does that, he goes off to film I Love Money, which is a competition show where all these people from all these different dating shows compete against each other for a quarter of a million dollars. Which, th if you think about it now, like back then, that was like a, a good chunk of change. You know what I mean? Um, wasn't it on Charm School they only won like 40000 <laughs> Did they? I mean, that sounds I right. I feel like the prize was pretty, it was like 40,000, but Sapphire was like, this is life changing. I opened up my own salon because of this and started well, my lip chat business. I thought on the traders this season, when they had to split $200,000, I was like, that is kind of crazy how little money they just won. Yeah, they won like a couple grand, like after taxes and everything. Like they literally didn't get much. Right. Maybe 50K. Um, but so, yeah, so Ryan Jenkins was the top three on Megan Wants a Millionaire. Then after he wins I Love Money 3, which never aired, it, they had just finished filming it. But then he starts dating this model, Jasmine, and something happens. They have some sort of volatile relationship. He ends up murdering her and trying to hide her. He, like, put her body in, like, a suitcase. And, in, like, like, a motel, it. right? Yeah, and, like, dumped it in the garbage thinking nobody was going to find it. And then they found it. But he, like, removed her teeth and I think, like, burned her or removed her finger so that you couldn't identify who she was. Like, it was a very thought out, like, tried to cover up the, the, the murder. And then once they were on to him, he tried to flee to Canada. They were trying to catch him. And then he ends up, you know, offing himself before they got to him. It's crazy, crazy, crazy story. Wow, which then ended all of these of love shows. Like all of it, them were. It was the end of yeah. It was essentially the end of VH1 reality. To be honest, like they kind of just stopped. Like and they they stopped and then restarted with Basketball Wives and Love and Hip Hop. Like that was like yeah. the the second wave of VH1 reality was that genre. So, oh, Crispy Tree knows her her. Yeah, Crispy Tree. Crispy. Yeah. Were she you at the scene of the crime? He dumped her in several different dumpsters, but they identified her through the serial number in her breast implants. Yes, I remember that. Cause he took out her teeth and all that. Like, it was wild. Like, that whole thing was like, like, how did you, how would you even know to remove all of that stuff? That's kind of a lull. I'm sorry. <laughs> Being identified <laughs> by your breast implant. <laughs> it was the end of love, Michelle. I know. And it was Love a sad time. It was such a sad time because we were looking forward to the news because season three was going to be good. They had Lacey Skulls on season three. Like mm -hmm. it was like we were ready for that season. That and has then to they be crazy too before. to film a show that never comes out like Ultimate Girls Trip season three, four or whatever. Like I wish, like that they, has to be released it. I wish I they would. Like, okay. even if they don't air exactly what happened that night and just do, like, a title card of, like, Brandy Glenville claims this, Caroline Manzo claims this, and then we just move to, like, the day, the next day when we have the fallout of all of it. It's, I don't think I Caroline don't, wants to see any footage of it, period. No, even if, want any, yeah, that's why she's fighting so hard, is she doesn't want any of it out there. Which makes me question. Mm. Makes me question why. I don't know. <laughs> Fishing. Um, Nessa says, and trust being in your 40s and making everything for three people who all like different things all the time is no less exhausting. Are we talking about wait, kids? What is that? Oh, wait. Did you see something about a move, movie on Lifetime? That's what I thought you were talking about. No. He has a movie, Why, a Lifetime movie? Did they identify him by his breast implants? <laughs> oh, well. I, this I love revisiting these ultras. We need like Netflix needs to buy them so that we can like actually rewatch them. But some of the so I was watching Next the other day, and it was wild because the guys would go on the dates and then they'd come back and be like, oh, she had such big titties, like oh, she can't handle all this. Like they mm -hmm. were just like so like bad. I know it was awful, but it was like the time. Like you just kind of like. It was just inter it was so entertaining and the everyone was being exploited at that time. So oh yeah, and everybody loved it. Like they continued, like they were exploited on Rock of Love and then they signed up for I Love Money and then they signed up for Term School. They're like, keep paying me and exploiting me, and I'll make great television. Like Lacey didn't give a fuck. No, but it was different back then because social media wasn't a thing. So like the yeah. world wasn't exploiting them and like the producers were, you know. Yeah. Um boy, I do remember Boy Meets Boy. And I don't remember Boy Meets Boy. I remember yeah. finding Prince Charming. And wasn't he an escort in the end of it? I believe so, yeah. 
Yeah. So those Brandon were two. Was not good. I don't. I I remember it coming out. Lance Bass hosted it, right? It was like the first like gay bachelor on Logo. Yes. Mm-hmm. See. R A P Logo. <laughs> R A P Logo. Um. And yeah, and he ended up being like a male escort or something. See, this is the thing. This is why we can't have nice things. There's always they always pick the wrong gays to put on television, and then they just ruin everything. We lost it with Finding Prince Charming. We lost it with the Real Friends of WeHo. Like they need to put some some solid gays on television. No. I don't understand why they can't figure that out. It really doesn't make sense to me. Um, I had, I agree. A uh, rock of love two was good was gross because oh rock of love bus yeah yes was on rock of love season three for those who don't know was on tour buses because it seems the budget was very low for it so they just followed Brett Michaels around on two tour buses which was the cast was crazy because think about trying to find a group of girls that are willing to just sit on film and a reality TV show on tour buses you really yeah. are like pulling the bottom of the barrel and they brought the drama they really did yeah and the winner of that season she was a penthouse mate or something but like was like ashamed by it or something there was some weird storyline where everyone was like trolling her for being a penthouse mate and like because she, she they were like you just want to be here so you can be famous um but it's like aren't isn't that why uh, we're all here ladies all there. Yeah. no shit <laughs> Would you ever go on one of those shows? If you could go on one of the dating shows, which one would it be? I would. Hmm. Yeah. Flavor of Love. I Love New York. Rock of Love. Shot at Love with Tila Tequila. Ocho Cinco. I you think have the girl, real I think, chance. Yeah. I think the girls from Flavor of Love are most are more my vibe. I think I would have more fun with them. The Rock of so Love you, girls. You would date like, Flavor Flav. Well, for for the show, sure. It's for none of them are actually dating him. No, but you still have to like kiss him and pretend you're into him. I would rather give him a peck on the cheek or the lips than come near Brett Michaels. I'm sorry, Brett Michaels smells really? like STDs and beer. <laughs> I, I would much rather go for Brett Michaels than Flavor Flav. <laughs> no, I mean Flav's aura is a little nicer to me than Brett. So. Really? Yeah, I'd be like, let me let me feel those hair extensions, Brett. I feel like he's bald under. He has like that bandana yeah. where it's like the Have hair you is seen him? Have you seen him without it? It's so bad. No, I haven't. <laughs> let me show you a picture. Brett Michaels hair. You're gonna you're gonna die. Um wait, this is hilarious. This oh wait, where am I? That yes, is- that's from the show. He's he's kind of giving Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Is he though? Like, is he? He's doing the Rachel. He's oh yeah, to... Angelique in the comments said, "I forgot Polly D had one." Oh, that's right. Polly D had a dating show too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ray I was not a sure person though. Oh, who's the? How did they get? Oh, I guess they were. Even the Tila Tequila people got some of their own spinoffs. Did they? Oh, we're at the Entertainer of Love. Do you remember that one? Where they the took entertainer the Entertainer from I Live New York and, get, yes. and he was dating out of his mom's house. Yes, out of the basement. Mm-hmm. Mom's basement, yeah. That was wild. What a time. Oh, we need more of these. Bra- like Bravo needs to get on this and reboot some of these old style shows. I agree. I- People are just, I don't know. I think we'll never get back to that though because there's so many factors now with social media and people trying to create platforms for themselves to be famous on i think the only oh go ahead did you watch love is blind yes i did i was that i was gonna say the only one that is doing it like the old times to me is love is blind for some reason those people have like no shame (laughs) well but that was the thing i just watched the reunion last night and that was the thing is there was this one guy trevor with Mm -hmm. the guy with the mullet and like the eczema he um he they brought him into the reunion because he had a girlfriend when he joined the show and that was a whole scandal and so they had him address it at the reunion and he was talking about you know how oh the reason he joined the show but yes he was technically dating a girl but their relationship was just so toxic so he thought he would join you know love is blind to like find a healthy love but like so people are still doing that they're still like going on these reality shows just become famous yeah, that's true, I guess. But, like, I feel like they, on that show, they're kind of willing to, like, look like 
a mess on TV. Like, yeah. Chelsea is looks crazy on TV. Megan Fox, yeah. Yeah. Shot at Love with Polly and Vinny. That's what it was called. Oh, that, oh it was more recent. Yeah. I remember when it came out. I was like, I wait, 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 I shot love it. Vinny. Oh, yeah. Did you Vinny's go? You didn't go to his, his, his uh, Magic Mike show? Or what was it? Chippendales? No, I should have. He lives on, he doesn't, he lives like in the city still. I could, I could probably link up. Oh. Hey, Vinny. Have you seen Couple to Thruple? Uh huh. I have. Is it good? It's okay. I've heard it's, it was okay. It's okay. It's uh, the idea. I know so many thruples these days in the city that the idea is not as legendary to me as I think they want it to be. <laughs> you, you know thruples? Yeah. Like legitimate people that are in a thruple. It, like, what is. I yes, I've confused. gone on a date. Like I've gone on a double date with B- Brian and myself in a thruple. Really? Yeah. Uh huh. So, like, I feel like the dynamic of a thruple is so challenging. Like, it's just an added layer of a relationship. I agree. It's not for me, but I'm not here. I'm not here to judge it, but it's not for me. The logistics yeah. of it, especially like, yeah. I feel like you'll understand this as like a whole ass adult who's like busy with a life. Getting one person to be like on your level as like a partner is hard enough to like land. I can't imagine having to keep up with two people. Like, yeah. Like with life and schedules and work, I'm like, how do I have enough time to like date for a third? You know, like, cause they active, the couple that, the couple that I know best that is a part of this, they were like actively dating for a third. And like, they both are just like very busy adults living in New York city. And yeah. See, I couldn't do a throuple because I would get jealous. I would be like, I would have to compete with the other person in the relate. Like I would just always be in competition because I want to be the number one. Always. I I don't need to be the number one, but I'm certainly not going to be the number three. Fuck <laughs> like, that. Who, who wants to be the number three? <laughs> exactly. There always is a number three. I know. Well, there has to be. That's the rule of numbers. I know. That's why. It's like That's you why can't four be. is better than three. <laughs> Listen, I love a good threesome, but I don't think I could realistically do a thruple. For no. people that make it work. Listen, there's a couple that are a thruple that I met here in downtown. They do the thruple. I feel like they have issues because I'm like very inquisitive and that's um judging. But like Well, I know that's the thing is like, is it a sol- is the thruple a solution or is it something that you guys always wanted? Is the question. Yeah. You know? Because people open their relationships as solutions to a problem, Just which is not going to open a relationship. <laughs> But then what's the point of opening a relationship then if there's not a solution that you're trying to solve within your relationship? Well, I I guess when I mean solution, I mean if there's issues in the relationship. But if you're both like, I would like to go like hook up. Like I get horny sometimes when you're out of town. Like, can I go hook up with someone? And they're like, yeah, "Yeah, sure. But like, if you're like, you aren't providing for me the things that I need, like, and I need to go elsewhere. I think that's a weird place to open it up. Yeah. Yeah, Sex friends, whether they all agree I am the number one guy in the group. Well, I'm the number one chaos starter in the group. No, I'm absolutely. absolutely, You know what, Joe? I am absolutely the number one guy in the group. And listen, should this show ever see the light of day, you will see that. There's a reason I have not been put on question on the chopping block with this cast. Um, I love that you have beef with the cast that hasn't even, the cameras aren't even up yet. (laughs) <laughs> well, because here's the thing. We all have such real relation. That's why I'm like, this isn't a Friends of WeHo where you're casting a bunch of people together. Like, the people that we're all, like, we have real relationships with each other and our friendships are real and people have fucked each other and it's gotten complicated and it's a whole thing. Um, So, yeah, the drama is real. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. It's so fun. Um, All right. I know we got to wrap, Um, but thank you for joining me, Tom Hamlet. Of course, Zach. You know, I always have the best time with you. So. Your podcast is called Dumpster Dive. Yes. Available all podcast platforms. And you have a Patreon? Uh, we do have a Patreon currently. If you'd like to support us, we have just like low level tiers where you can just give us some money to keep the podcast going. And then we have uh, like monthly episodes over there. But just subscribe to the podcast. We got a lot going on there. We one to two episodes a week on current reality, which is Bravo, Netflix. We were talking Love is Blind right now. And also some throwback recaps on shows that made us love the genre of reality television. I love it. I love it. And your socials, where can people follow you? 
Yes, follow me at the Tom Hamlet. I'm sorry, I forgot to put it on the video here. Um, yeah, at the Tom Hamlet. Yes. Uh, guys, you can follow me at Just Plain Zach or follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach and catch No Filter with Zach Peter Monday through Thursdays. We stream live first thing YouTube first thing on YouTube in the morning and then immediately it goes onto the podcast. So if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple, be sure to leave me a nice Apple podcast review or a nice five stars on Spotify because I love all of that validation. Um, we will have a bonus members only this weekend, not tonight. Like I said, I'm going to the Glad Awards, so that will come at some point. But... Stay tuned. Be patient. Uh, and I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.